Do you prefer roles where you wear time period costumes or like jeans and a t-shirt? Do you like dressing up on stage? Everyone I guess? loves all dressing actors. up. In all actors, regardless of what they tell you, love dressing up in costumes. I don't care who you are. You love putting on a costume. It's so much fun. Um, yeah, see the thing is like when me and my dick I just basically wore a t shirt I had, which is if you didn't if you haven't picked the reference out, it's straight up out of Pineapple Express, which is one of my favorite movies. Um, <laughs> um and so yeah, I, no, no, it's just like each other. Um no I love wearing costumes. Me and Nick recently, uh, this this fall we're in a production of Tartuffe and it was a period production um, and we had the best time dressing up. Oh my dad's calling me. Dad, can I call you back? I'm doing this interview right now. I'm sorry. No, no, sorry, sorry. Okay, bye. My dad. Um, and we were in a production of Tartuffe and we all wore period like at the time French, you know, 1800s costumes where we had to wear giant oh, tall socks and wigs and we had a gr I had a great time. Nick has Nick's probably has a picture. Do you have a picture? Oh no, yeah, it's just a well. Um and so yes, I do like dressing up in costumes more. Except one show it took place in the 1920s my sophomore year. And I uh, the costume was great, but my if anyone hears this if anyone cares about this story, uh, I had to shave my head. This is why I shaved my head in the first place before I arrived. We had to shave the whole, there was one gag in the show where I had to have a toupee and the toupee comes off and I'm balding. So I had to shave basically a ring around my head with a bald right here. And I had that for three weeks. Oh my god. That was the first time in my life. <laughs> I can't I had to wear, I wore a hat oh. for three weeks straight. That's awesome. So don't ever do that. If you ever get a, if you ever get a bet or something, or don't do it. Please. It will destroy. And anyone who knows me during that time, I was in some form of depression or another because I had no idea. But anyways, other than that, every other costume I've had has been pretty fun. So. Um, I saw that you were Lumiere in Meeting the Beast. Yes, I was. That was back uh, like in junior year of high school. <laughs> it's beautiful music accompanying our interview. Um, I'm so fun. excited that, that we found this place. Yes, like, it's so cool. That was my junior year of high school, yes. And uh, that was fun. If you weren't acting, what would you be like? What what's your other career like ideal? Be a call monitor for No, I you know I don't really know. I, I really like I like writing. I don't write enough, and I don't have any. I, I, I don't really have any uh, any substantial experience or or clout in the writing world, but I do enjoy writing and it's something that I think if I, if I couldn't act anymore, it's something that I would really like to hone my skills. I've written like a play, I wrote a play in a writing class and stuff like that. And, um, we, you know, there's plenty of jokes that we all have between us that we could easily write in skits and sketches and all that stuff. But, um, yeah, this would be writing. So, yeah. Okay, so you did a short film. You did a short film called Camp Chapel. Yes. Which I watched the other day because one of your fans asked me this question. Okay. And what was it like working on that, and how was it different from working on the plays? Hey, film acting is a whole different world than the stage. You know, it's all very condensed, and, and uh, it's, it's, you know, you're not doing an entire play's worth of, of scene work. You're, it's all very cut up. and. And we had a great time on that. It's, you know, it's it's a student film, so there's times when you kind of go, hey, <laughs> the potion master himself is here. Um, there's times when you go, uh, <laughs> when you go, when you get frustrated because you're sitting there at six in the morning and you go, I want to leave this place. Um, but I had a great time working on that. It was, my, it was like my first student film that I had done, and um, you know, they there was there was a whole act where they said you're gonna have to show your butt. And, but, so I'll be glad to sing my butt. Good, and, it's, uh, on the, it's on the Star Kid page, just so you know. Really? Really. Which butt? Um, one of the scenes where he's like leaning over from that Camp Chapel thing. There we go. And I, I, I there's a great to... picture. No, oh, there's well, a... I don't know about like private pictures. I'm talking I was, about a screenshot. There is a great picture of me and Jelly's butt. 
It's a there picture a that will live in infamy from, from me and my dick of, of my butt. But I'm not going to go into well, that right now. Well, that's not on there. There's um, a screenshot of Camp Chapel. No one like, will ever see. I was like, I can't believe you posted Joey's ass on yeah, the start of the page. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I had a lot of fun working on that. Sitting in front of air conditioning. So, yeah, so, yeah. I guess. And that was, got into that because uh, we have a bunch, I mean, we're, the, the theater department in Michigan is in too intertwined with the film department, we try a lot harder to get more involved. And when we do, we actually have a really good time. I have a lot of friends in the film department. And, uh, it's it was just a cool experience. It was a cool experience working on it. And it's like maybe I'll you know, I'll do it again. The character was like so different. From I know, right? It was scene. just a total asshole, which was which was fun to it was do fun too. Yeah, it's fun to watch. That's cool. Being mean to us. So. Okay, that question I remember that was from Rachel Batten from. Houston. Well, thank you, Rachel. What are your thoughts yeah. on the fan art? Love the fan art. I think the fan art. The fan art initially was one of the things where, really where I went, "This is the coolest thing I've ever seen." I mean, um, our um, our amazing, awesome friend, who's kind of uh, who's done practically all of our in-depth fan work, fan art for us, um, named Dove, uh, and Dove kind of initially. I guess led the brigade of, of fan art. Thanks so much, love to Doug if you're listening to this. Uh, she drew some of the coolest pictures you've ever seen of all of us, and uh, I love them. I love there's there's some cutesy ones. I've got some cool ones for my birthday. They're a little slightly slightly anime driven manga right. pictures of all of us. That I just love. I love when it's it's great to see people's takes on our characters, but done in different ways. I think fan art's the coolest thing in the world. So if you do, if you if there's someone out there and you draw fan art. Keep doing it because we <laughs> get a kick out of the fan art. We love Comments the fan on fan art? Great. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot get Joe Moses to stop talking, <laughs> I find. <laughs> um, are there any quotes from any of the Star Kid shows that you're tired of hearing? You can say. I can be honest? Yeah. You can tell me to edit it. Things have been totally awesome for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna go out and say it, and I know people think, no, it, if you want to keep, I, it's funny because that's a phrase that we all just kind of said. You know, it's like you right. just say it. it's like, yeah, this is totally awesome. Now we can't say it without it being like, are you making a show? Or it's like, no, we just don't say that. So that I guess, if anything, that's a phrase. I'm not sick of it, but that's a phrase where it's like, yeah, so I'm things have been totally. Fun. Don't worry about it. But, but, like, Red Vines? Are you going to get tired of the Red Vines soon? <laughs> no comment on the Red Vines. No comment on the Red Vines. Joey loves Red Vines. I love Red Vines. Great. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> um, how much of the giant chocolate bar from Hermione's a Bitch thing did you mm -hmm. actually eat? About a fourth. I don't know. You used, like, the one. same one the whole time? It was the same one, and I just kept eating a little away right. at it more and more, but about a fourth. Not that much, actually. <laughs> It's not a lot of it was gone. It was delicious. It probably got stale and got thrown away at some point. Probably. Um, have you ever prank called anyone? Ever? I guess. Oh yeah. I have tons. Of I have times. great prank phone calls. I was just. What's, what's your, your go-to prank, prank phone call? call? We'll we'll turn this one on to Nick. This is really bad, okay. and I don't want to get. I actually don't want to get in I'm trouble for this. Um, my um. I went to this um, theater pro summer theater program at Brown University, and um, I went with a kid whose mom worked at um, CBS. Uh, and one day he was walking through like the halls of CBS, and somebody left their Palm Pilot out. So he got all these famous people's numbers. Sweet. He got Dan Rather's phone number. So I and my friends prank phone called Dan Rather's cell phone. Not expecting him to pick up. And he totally picked up the phone. And he was like, oh, this is Dan. And we were like, uh, uh, and we were all speechless. <laughs> and all of us in the so car were speechless. Kind of... Well, no. And then I grabbed the phone. And I go. said, now it's and then I, <laughs> I said, Dan, it's John. Richard's been hit with an axe. And to hear, to be my ears, to hear Dan Rather say, oh my god, was the funniest thing to ever happen to me. Hearing Dan Rather go, oh my god, is, is everyone okay? 
and hanging out, screaming, He's bleeding everywhere! 